I never said it was fragile. When did I say that containers are fragile? I didn't say that. But is Hong Kong also this slow? What's the situation? Here's the thing. If you run virtual machines and containers on the same physical machine, since containers themselves use fewer resources, doesn't that mean you can run more containers comparatively? Right? That's the idea. Similarly, if you have 100 applications running on 100 virtual machines and you also run 100 containers, surely the containers use fewer resources, right? Right? Wait a second. It should redirect. Wait a second. It's this website. Look here, look here, or here, or here. Look at this sentence. Look here, this is their website. See Docker Hub, scroll down. Look at this sentence. Tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, a hundred thousand. Isn't it called over a hundred thousand container images? There are software vendors, open source projects, and community ones. Aren't there 100,000 images of container images here? Look, your most commonly used images rank the highest. Nginx, MongoDB, and this, what? Node.js, Redis, Python, Ubuntu, BZBox, what? Look here, good. Search here, search for MySQL. You see, MySQL comes up. Here, there are various versions of MySQL. This is MySQL. Let me search. I go into MySQL here. Then here's MySQL. Here are the tags. Which version of MySQL do you want? 
For instance, 5.6, you see, here's MySQL version 5.6. See that? 5.6. Now you're searching for information on MySQL 5.6. Then below, there's a lot about this image, how this image is made, it's all here. You can check, look at GitLab, scroll down. It's this image, how you see this image is written. This image is written like this. All the parameters are here. Later, we have to write this ourselves. How many lines does it have? 18 lines. It's written in 18 lines, this image. Later, we have to write this ourselves, the Docker file. And then below, there will be some explanations of the parameters. Look, architecture, hash image. You let me look, MySQL. There's an overlay overview overview. This is a specific detail. Overview, scroll down, look here. Every version's Docker file, how it's written out, how the image is constructed is all here. For example, I wanna go into, this is based on what you see here, eight Oracle eight Debian. What does that mean? It means the underlying operating system, is it Oracle Linux? Is it based on Debian? You get it? So it's made using Debian or made by Oracle. All this is there. For example, 5.7.5, I open it. And this section is based on the Oracle version of the Docker file. The underlying host, do you know if the image creation was based on Oracle? The underlying host, whether it's based on Oracle, look at the commands I wrote. They are all Oracle commands. For instance, when I install packages, is it the same installation? Look, this installation of packages, is it the same? But if it's Debian, if it's made with Debian, look, I'll find one made with Debian. Why did it exit out on me? If it's written by Debian, you scroll down. Look here, this is the Debian version. Look at the commands used. Are they Debian commands? Look here. Understood? I use the underlying Debian, how this image is constructed, it's also here. Okay, we'll write it ourselves later. Yes, write it ourselves. All right, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. So what is MySQL? They also give you an introduction. See that? What this image does, how to use this image. Look here, how to use this image. Did someone write it? Just now, name connecting to the database name, that's the name of your database. Isn't it connected to your password? One, isn't it attached to your password? Then, D, isn't it running in the background? Connecting to MySQL tag, which is your version. Look, they teach you all kinds of how to use it, like which network you want to use, things like that. You're connecting other users, it's all here. Then here, for instance, you want to use a config file. One, it's also here. Then all sorts of use cases. What are the environment variables? Look, is there MySQL root password? MySQL database, MySQL user. MySQL, this is the ordinary user. Ordinary user's password. Then the admin's password. And whether an empty password is allowed. Here, look below. Can you connect which variables? It's all here. Good. For example, let me give you an example. Just now, when running the container, actually I can directly here connect to MySQL root password. Also connect to MySQL database. You can here run a container, then connect it to one capital letters. The variables are all MySQL database equals MySQL database equals WordPress. This port can't be 3306 anymore. 3306 is used. Then 3333066, 3, add one more. Then you can add a one, name MySQL, WordPress, Docker, PS. A, the database is running so fast. Now, how do you access this database? MySQL, U root, P, H, 192.168, 2.106, P33066, press enter. Password, show database. 
Isn't there one called WordPress database, right? Everyone, is this clear? Understood. So I just taught you how to look it up on the website. Now you know how to write it. Otherwise, how would you know what to do? What parameters to add? How to use this command? Every image has its own documentation. It's all documented. And this file, how the entire image was constructed, they also tell you how it was written. Later, we'll let you write it yourself. Sorry about that. You'll have to write it yourself during the exam. In the exam, you have to write a Docker file yourself. Is that clear? Don't panic at all. Later, I will teach you how to write it. The requirement during the exam is that it cannot exceed 12 lines. The more lines you write, the more complex it becomes. The more complex it is, the larger your container image will be. The bigger it is, they require you to complete it within 10 lines. Memorize those 10 lines, all right? Can you use Docker Hub during the exam? Maybe it's an internal network and you can't access Docker Hub. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you use Baidu during the exam? If you can use Baidu, then go ahead. I'll put my answers in my email. You can download them from your email. Is that clear? We'll discuss the more complex stuff later. You know about the previous cloud services exam, right? It was all done in the cloud. Some people had the idea of launching a cloud host before the exam. You get it? Anyway, I can access it remotely. I could just get the CIP during the exam. Then during the exam, I can remotely SSH into the cloud host that I set up beforehand. Since it's a cloud service exam, it's definitely on the public cloud. The machines can usually access the internet. You know what they did to prevent this? They did this. They put a big sign on the desk during the exam to prevent you from connecting to the host you prepared beforehand. They have all sorts of measures. They said if they catch you, you get a zero and you can't take the exam for three years. It's mainly that last part. You can't take the exam for three years. That really freaks you out. You don't dare take that risk. Actually, I found out a lot of people did it and they weren't caught. But you don't want to take that risk. If you really can't pass the exam, if you're going to fail, then just look it up. If you think you might pass and you only forgot one or two things, then go ahead and look it up. But doesn't that put you at great risk? I didn't say that. That wasn't recorded. Later, I'll teach everyone how to set up WordPress. Setting up MySQL and how to integrate them. We'll be setting up a real service, running a project. We'll cover all of that later. So just now, we learned how I accessed the database. I also taught everyone how to use Docker Hub to find documentation on everything that's running. Almost everything is documented. Almost everything is here. For example, if I want to run a WordPress project, a blog system, I want to run a blog system. Here's a WordPress blog system. Look, it has various versions of pre-written Docker files. You can choose whichever one you like. Some are written based on PHP 8.2, right? Based on Apache. It's written using Apache with PHP 8.2. They have that too. Also, those written based on PHP 8.0. And what is WordPress? How do you run WordPress? What parameters can you add? See, if your database is already connected, if your database is already set up, when you run WordPress, it must be Docker run to run this, right? One, WordPress DB shows equals your database's address, right? DB user, DB password, DB name. These are the details of the database you just set up, right? So 
Does this establish the connection? We'll cover these topics in the next class. All right, as for how you got here, figure it out yourself. It seems like Internet Explorer isn't very useful. Look, Google Chrome is much better. It runs very smoothly. All right. It seems there's something called Docker. There's something like a big P or something. There's a command that can check the port called Docker port. Port connected to the container, connected to this. Called, what's the container called? E39. E39. Port connected to the container, listing it. Is this the container's port mapping status? What's going on? Isn't this it? E392. There shouldn't be two duplicates, right? Since there are so few containers, the chances of overlap are pretty low. It's not here. This is optional. It should be Docker port connected to the container. Isn't it supposed to list the port mappings? What about 91? What does that mean? Is this container E3926? This one, right? E3926, also nothing. Publish, publish, P. Let me check. There should be a command, docker port, it should be there. Strange, using this command you can find it. Docker port, docker port, 591. See, this is found because it's not mapped. Maybe because it's not mapped. See, if it's mapped, it can be found. If it's mapped, it can be found. But if it's not mapped, it seems you can't find it. So you must connect the port mapping. Without mapping, it won't work. You see, this is an example of not having mapping. So you can't find it either. Indeed, there's no mapping. Once there's no mapping, it won't be usable. Many people ask, in what situation would you not map it? For example, if I'm using it as a tool for testing, if I just want to enter the container for a test, there's no need to map it out, right? Right, I'm not providing a service. I'm just using it for testing. So you can't log in. You can log in, but you can't use it. So it must be mapped. Yes, it must be mapped. Normally, as you see here, you can indeed find the mapping. Without mapping, there is nothing, right? It's used for internal testing, for internal testing. For example, a database, I don't need to expose it immediately. No need to expose it. I can do internal testing first and then expose it afterward. For example, let me give an example. Just now, although there's no mapping now, later on, it can still be mapped. You see, I don't have mapping now, but later it can still be mapped. CS, CS, it can be mapped out. Docker port should specify a container's mapping and then connect it. Docker, Docker port. It should be connected to this container. C31. Then connect this. Look here. It should be like this. 888 TCP. There is no such port. C2180. There should be a way to map it out. It should be port. It should be port. Docker. Port. It just blacked out. Private port. Doesn't this refer to the protocol? This should refer to the protocol. It's not about the port, right? It should be port connected to this. CSA C21 port. C21, it shouldn't be 80. It should be a private port slash protocol. That's what it means, right? Right? Or specify one. Do a mapping for a container. It should mean this. The first part is the private port. The second part is the protocol. So I think it's like this, but it doesn't work. Let me check. Docker, mapping, container port. What's the command? 
Docker run, that's right. If the container is already running, if it's already running, let's see how to map it out. Add a mapped port. Port, it should be this. It's set up in the config file. Too troublesome. Is there a command? It should be for running containers. It should be mapping the port of a running container. Adding a port to a running container. So troublesome. You still have to add it yourself. You can't directly modify the configuration file. Maybe it's possible. Updating a container, but this only applies to CPU, memory. It doesn't seem to have that option. Updating a container, no, no, it doesn't have that. Publish, docker, docker, container, update. Can you? It doesn't seem to have this parameter. It doesn't have this parameter. It seems the most forceful way is to use the ip tables command, it seems. It seems you can use the ip tables command to map it out. If the container is running and it's not mapped out, it seems it won't work. You see, they use this ip tables command to map it out. It seems they make it into an image and then publish it again. It doesn't seem that simple. There's no one command that can directly add another one. You can't directly add a port to an already running container. You can't. It seems IP tables can do it. So you really need to add the port. Because if you don't, it's very troublesome to add it later. Because it's essentially the same as adding an IP tables rule. You add an IP tables rule. It's teaching you to manually add a rule here to create a mapping. That's what it means. It's telling us to manually add a rule for mapping. Of course, that's possible because ultimately it's an IP tables command. All right. The final sentence, the final sentence. Containers are born for tasks. Containers are born for tasks. This sentence is very important. You'll find that sometimes the container just stops running, right? Remember this sentence. Containers are born for tasks. If the container has no task to do, it will just stop. If the container has nothing to do, it will stop. So remember this, containers are born for tasks. In what situation will a container stop? Let's take a look. Docker, pull, CentOS, seven. I'm downloading a CentOS seven image. Actually, this is useless because containers are born for tasks. What are you downloading a CentOS seven image for? Why download it? It's not running any business. So what's the point of downloading it? We use it to build a new image. We construct within CentOS seven. I run some services inside it. Let it build a new image, that's fine. But if you just get a CentOS 7 by itself, it's useless. Look, Docker, run. If it's D, it's useless. D for what? It has no error to correct. What are you doing? There's no port to map. There's no error to correct. Can I run a container? You can run it, but is it running? Has it started? It started, but it's already stopped. Because it has no errors, it stopped. Because it has no errors, it stopped. Containers are created for tasks. They must have a job to keep them running indefinitely. Okay, let me give you an example, just like here. If I were here to add an it then bin bash, it's already there. 737, press enter. You see, am I actually already running this container? I've gone into its background. Does it have a task? Does it have a task? What for? It runs a bin bash. Come here, Docker piece. Uh, am I still running? Am I running? What am I doing? I'm running a bin bash. Have I entered the container? Do I just have a task? I have a task, but then exit. Now, do I have a task? Is this task finished? Sorry, this container also stopped. Containers are created for tasks. If there's no task, the container will stop. If there's no task, the container will end because containers are created for tasks. So do you see the problem? All containers, when running, eventually need a command to keep them from ending. For example, these containers, why don't they end? Because when we run containers, we let them run a script. This script is a background service. For instance, I'm in this place here, you see, docker exec, it zero ab bin bash. Where is this thing? Here's a script, an HTTP script. Where is this script? In, in USR lockbin. There's a script, there's a script. What does this script do? It runs inside an HTTP process. That is, every time I run a container, do I not let it run this script once? What does this script do? Isn't it running an HTTP process in the background? So doesn't it never end? It never ends because you do something to keep it from ending. Otherwise, 
the program will end. Otherwise, it will end. If it ends, the container shuts down. It shuts down. Containers are created for tasks. Containers without tasks should not be running. It's normal. Isn't this saving resources? Instead of running empty containers there, what if I really want CentOS to keep running? For example, I'm running a container now, a hello world. I tell you, as soon as it runs, it ends. Because doesn't hello world end once it runs? The container ends immediately. This one, as soon as you exit, it ends. What if you want it not to end? See, every second, sleep for a moment. Every second, run hello world. As long as this condition is true, it never ends. Then the container will not end. The container will not stop. Born for tasks. This is its design philosophy. This is its design philosophy. Containers without tasks should not be running. Save resources. Always remember this phrase. Containers are born for tasks. Containers without tasks should terminate. Do you understand? Give it a task. Like if you eat at my house every day and you don't work, wouldn't you feel uneasy? Wouldn't you ask if you could do some work? Otherwise, you'd feel embarrassed, right? If you work for a company and the boss pays you every day, but you have nothing to do, wouldn't that bother you? You'd ask the boss for some work to feel secure. Maybe you don't mind now, but when it's time to lay people off, they will first let go of those who usually have nothing to do. Do you understand? Everyone, do you understand? Okay, there should be a status called status. You can see all the exited containers. It should be possible to list them. Can it be done? Tonight, when you go back, you have work to do. You have many containers running. And I'm running so many containers. You see, my system is very idle. Look, my system is very idle. It has nothing much to do. And I have already run so many containers. If it were a normal environment, wouldn't I need to start so many virtual machines? If I had to start so many virtual machines, I haven't even touched them. These virtual machines would have crashed already. I only have eight gigabyte of RAM. If I started so many VMs, they would have crashed by now. I didn't do any special operation just now, but isn't it done? Then why did he do this? Is it because when I was defining the Docker file, wasn't it written there? Where is it? When I was writing the Docker file, surely inside there is one, but I randomly pick one. When I wrote this Docker file, customizing the image, it definitely has one at the end. You see, isn't it running here? Do you see it? For instance, NGNX. I search for NGNX. I search for NGNX. I go to the home page. How do I get into GitLab? It redirects to GitLab. I search here, NGINX. I search for NGINX. You see, aren't there various versions of NGINX here? Just pick one. Scroll down at the end. You see, isn't it running a command called NGINX G here? It ran such a script here. Isn't this script keeping it always busy? Doesn't it always have work to do? Do you understand? Containers are created for tasks. Containers are born for tasks. Okay, remember today's words. Okay, next, this week's homework. Each of you set up your Docker file environment deployment. Then inside it can run Nginx, can run MySQL, and MySQL can be used. And best of all is to deploy WordPress with MySQL. Although I haven't talked about it yet, next week we will discuss it. It's best to deploy WordPress with MySQL. Next week, we'll finish Docker basics, then run Dockerfile, compile images, and then upload to the image repository, then use CCE to call this image repository, call this image. We will talk about CCE. CCE is based on K8S. We'll first use our cloud's CCE to explain after explaining. Then you look at open source K8S. You'll understand it better.